Hey everybody, so today we're talking vintage neckties and more specifically selling vintage neckties on sites such as eBay and Etsy. In an earlier video, I talked about selling neckties in general, about going to thrift stores, yard sales, estate sales, places like that. And we talked about the different brands that are good to keep in mind that can maybe consistently give you a fairly good return on your investment. So today we're going to talk more specifically about vintage, do a little bit of a deeper dive. Vintage ties are actually my favorite to sell. So even though I'm not going to pass up a Brioni necktie if I see it, I do definitely keep my eye open for vintage neckties when I'm looking and searching at the thrift store and I'm out on the hunt for things to flip. So first of all, we're going to, just going to talk about figuring out the age of our neckties. And there's a few little tips, a few little things that can help us figure out the age. Now, um, there's, there's a lot of overlap between decades. And as I was looking through some sold listings on eBay, you really don't have to be super exact. If it fits a certain style, tie buyers seem to be okay with a little bit of like, there's a, so many ties that are listed as 30s, 40s. Some were even 30s, 40s, 50s. Right. And so as long as you provide the information, you provide clear pictures and give specifically the length of the tie and the width of the tie, like we talked about last time, we'll review that again. Um, if you, well, actually, let's just review it right now. So obviously your length is going to be from like one point to the other point, And then your width is at the widest point of the tie is where I measure across. For the width so that's very important information for buyers for collectors to to even if you don't know the age of the tie collectors know their stuff and they're going to know where that falls in into their collecting um uh what's the word it falls into their collecting criteria so but a lot of times tie collectors are willing to go outside their criteria a little bit if it's a really awesome looking tie and they have the perfect suit or the perfect whatever that they think is gonna, um, or they just wanna add it to their collection. So first of all, let's talk about one quick tip that lets you know whether you have a vintage tie or not. Obviously, uh, vintage is also gonna en encompass like 80s and 90s and all the way up to Y2K. Um, but we're not going to talk about those too much. I like to focus on like the 30s, 40s, 50s. I do like to dabble a little bit, especially lately. I have a feeling that 70s ties might be having a little bit of a comeback. So I've kind of been keeping my eyes open for that. But first off, if you find a tie at the store and you take a look at it and you flip it over to see who makes it. So first of all, you see that... The tie, this particular tie is not lined. So that can kind of give you an idea as to age. Older ties, I've seen, I'm trying to think if I have it written down. Um, there was like a maybe 20s and 30s. It's more common to see a tie with no lining. Um, but I don't think that was absolutely definite as far as like no ties past that time ended up being unlined. But if the other thing we notice on this, the skinny part of the tie, the blade, or maybe this is the blade. See, I already forgot what I taught you in the last video. <laughs> um, the tag is down here, right? The tag is down here. Let's see if we have another example. Here's another older tie. And sure enough, the tag is right there. Okay, so it wasn't until I believe like the 60s that you start to see the the tags up here in the middle the back of the the wide part of the tie right so that's where we're used to finding the tags these days and that kind of started in the 60s possibly 70s the tag moved up so if you find a tie and you know your tag is down here it's a good indication that it's going to be before the 1960s which makes us excited right now the other hint for the age of a tie again these aren't hard and fast rules but if you consider the fact that a, a tie today 
like a standard necktie today is about 57, 58 inches long and a little over three inches wide. That's just kind of the standard. And I don't know how long it's been the standard, but um, you know, and there's also narrow styles, you know, people can specifically purchase narrow ties. Skinny ties kind of had a little resurgence recently, um, but just an average, average tie, you're gonna, you're gonna see about 58 inches, 57, 58 inches. Now, if you keep that in mind, Early ties, like 30s, 40s, 50s, are going to be like in the 44 inch, 45, 46, all the way up to 48. So they're going to be in the 40s, the length of those ties. If you kind of think of like a traditional like swing, uh, swing tie or swing outfit, or you think of vintage um, men's clothes with um, like double-breasted suits or maybe a three-piece suit, not much of the tie is showing. And so a lot of, especially like 30s, some of those ties were super short, but they were super wide because they had nice bold patterns and, and colors on it. And those are pretty well sought after. Now, as the decades went on, the ties got a little bit longer. So like 70s, you're going to be looking at ties that are over 50 inches long. Now, with, I just said like a standard tie today is probably a little over three inches. 30s, 40s ties can be like four inches, four and a half inches wide. Now, if you guys think about wide neckties, you might also think of the 70s, right? So wide neckties were very popular then. But think about material, okay? In the 70s, there was a lot of polyester, double knit polyester neckties. So that can be a hint. And also those ties are going to be like 50 plus inches long. So that's going to tell you right away as well as your, um, let me see if I have, I do have a 70s tie. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah. So here's, here's a crazy, it's nice and wide and you might look at it at first and be like, oh, I wonder if that's vintage, but it's, you know, I wonder if that's early, right? but then the tag is up here. So that, that told me that this is a 70s tie, even though it's not polyester, it's like a silky material. And yeah, it is silk, okay? So now there still is a little tag down here and you will still see that on ties today. A lot of times the, the material content tie tag is, is down here at the skinny end. That's true of ties even today, but the main brand tie tag <laughs> is going to be up higher on the back of this part of the tie. Okay, so this is going to be a longer tie than an early, even though it's wide, it's going to be longer. So that tells us it's not an early 30s or 40s or even 50s tie. Okay, so does that make sense? And think of like, if you see a tie that's um, very bold, you think of rockabilly, you think of swing, and it was all very um, bright, you know, I just keep holding this one up even though I think I have a couple. So bright colors, graphics, things like that. And we're gonna look at more examples in this video. Okay, so that label placement and then this, the length and width of the tie is going to help you, tell you the most about the age of your tie. But like I said, if you don't know the age of the tie, it's not going to be a deal breaker. If you can get into a rough estimate, a rough decade, just kind of throw it in there. And a lot of times I would do that. I would do 40s, 50s, or I would do 30s, 40s, and let the collector figure it out from there. Now, another couple things I could help with dating. Sometimes wool ties will have a WPL number, and that was for the wool products labeling. So kind of like an RN number. I don't know if I have a tie right now that has that, but WPL was only used from 1941 to 1959. So that can, can help narrow things down. And then I did see one. Oh, I just got this. Yeah. Um, so then another thing you might see on the tag is are the words. Okay, let me put that right here. If it'll focus. Uh, resilient construction. 
Okay, so I've talked about this in my what sold and some of the ties I've sold in the last few months. Um, the resilient construction, that wording on ties stopped being used in 1947. So that helped me. I listed some 1940s, late 30s, 40s ties. And because they said resilient construction, I knew they were, they were not any later than 1947. But I think it started sometime in the 20s. So that kind of gives you, you know, a decade and a half or so to kind of play around with. Anyway, so those are a few different things that can help you date the ties. Now, my favorite, like I said, 50s and earlier, I just recently, over the last few months, I've listed just a handful of those era neckties that I had in my stash, and they all sold. They've, they're, none of them are still sitting there. They've all sold, sold fairly quickly, so that can tell you something about the desirability of those eras of neckties. And like I said, 70s, 80s, 70s, I'm going to start giving a little bit more attention to, especially if there's something really fabulous about the wide, even if it's polyester, if it has some cool graphic or something on it, we can, I'm going to play around with that. Also, um, designers like Land Van, like I sold, it was a damaged Land Van tie and it still sold on Poshmark. It was only like 15, 15, $17, something like that. Um, but somebody still wanted it, and but it was a 70s wide tie. Um, I do have this one. I This is another Land Van, All right, 70s, oops. But I didn't pay close enough attention to it, and I'm pretty sure those are pulls all the way through it. So I haven't decided. The other one did sell with a little bit of, um, Damage. I think the problem with the other one was the in interfacing was kind of twisted, but so that's something somebody could fix. I don't think these pulls can get fixed, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. You can leave me a comment down below if you think I should list it anyway. If you think how noticeable are the pulls, should I just let this one go? Do you see what I'm saying? It's like a line down through here. Anyway. I'm always of two minds about listing damaged things. So unless you have something else that stands out like in a 90s tie or a early 2000s tie, like, like in the last video we talked about um, Polo Ralph Lauren. So some of their ties from that era can be really, really good pictorial ties of like fishing or um, fly fishing, you know, things like that. We saw a lot of the equestrian themed ones sold pretty well. Um, and then another thing that can also, we could take a look at, we'll, what we will take a look at is different novelty ties. It seems like the nineties were like really, um, heavy in the novelty tie <laughs> department. There's a lot of, um, I don't know, what do I come across? Mickey Mouse and Disney and, uh, what was the other one I was thinking of? Um, Warner Brothers. You see a lot of Bugs Bunny, things like that. So a lot of those 90s, early 2000s ties are out there. Um, so I would just look those up on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes the subject matter is, is like hot right now in, in popular culture. Otherwise, some things are a little bit more outdated. But they were a little um, overproduced maybe, so they're not super rare. So that is going to affect your value as well. Now there's also in like 80s ties, there's a certain type of tie that I look for that was popular in the 80s and that was the square end, here we go, the square end like knit necktie. Okay, so this one is Land's End. This might not even be 80s. This one, let's see if we have a made in dry clean only. This one is actually silk. And it was made in Italy. I don't know the age of that one, but a square tie I will always keep an eye out for. And this is made in Italy and it's silk. So I was thinking that one would do pretty well. Then we have, I have a couple more that I picked up at our little bins thrift store that I talk about a lot. And here's another one, a little bit wider, but also knit. And that brand, 
is alpaca knit by Rooster. Okay, so these square ties, I had a square tie sell in the last couple of weeks in my what sold videos. We'll take a look at it again, um, but it sold for $35. It was a Pendleton, but it was just a knit square end necktie and it sold for $35. So that was pretty good, I thought. So that's something I always take a look out for when I'm thrifting. I also kind of, sometimes it just depends on material. I, I look for plaid wool neckties. We have sold some in the past that were made in Scotland and have the name of a particular plaid or a tartan on the back and it tells you which, which tartan it is. Um, I don't know, I don't have many examples of that right now, but anything that is wool seems to do pretty well. So I have this style of wool necktie that has the fringe on the bottom. And I have sold this style before. Now this one is actually an older, its tag is down here. So we're talking probably 30s, 40s. And it's interesting, this one, the brand is Hand, hand Crest. And it says it was hand woven by Blind Craftsman, Hand Crest Incorporated in Seattle, Washington. Okay, so I have that. I had sold one before a couple other brands that were like weavers in the name. We'll take a look at it when we go to the computer. And let's see, I found a very similar one recently. And this is the one I just showed with the resilient construction. So we know that one is before 47, but same idea. It's got the little fringe at the bottom, no lining, but these always tend to do really well. Another type of tie we're gonna talk about later. And some of these things are gonna are gonna span different decades. So I started out talking about like 30s, 40s, and then I was talking about how like there's 80s ties that I look for. Now there can be 50s ties that are square end that will still sell. Um, there can be like for example, we're gonna I was gonna talk about rep ties, R E P P. Now this one's probably a 40s or so tie. Um, but rep ties go all the way up to the 80s, the very preppy 80s look, and even today they still make them, okay? And they can be pretty popular. We're going to talk more about what rep ties are as we go on, okay? So I just wanted to show you a few of the ones that I had just kind of sitting here that you could see in person. And otherwise, we are going to talk about one more thing. We're going to talk about Palm Beach ties. And I just wanted to show you one before we go to the computer. Nice, lovely pastel tie. This one's got some condition issues. You can see it's got this um, kind of a grease spot. I think that's where when it's knotted, it's here. And that's where it rubs, kind of rubs on the guy's chin. Sometimes you get grease spots right there. So this one's not in the greatest condition. I'm just gonna list it as is. But as you'll see, Palm Beach ties, here's a good shot of the label. Palm Beach, um, it's also labeled as Bo Brummel. So you want to be on the lookout for those. They're all this kind of uh, rough material, pastels, stripes or plaids, neckties. And I sold one earlier this spring for about $60. So definitely one to keep a lookout for. Okay, so as we go into our computer and we're going to look at some prices now of some of these things that we just talked about and a couple other categories and things, um, I am going to include in here the tie that I sold for the highest amount, which was $192.50. It was my top selling tie of, in my whole reselling career and we're gonna talk about it right now. So as usual, we are going to just be looking at the neckties listings on eBay for the most part. Obviously, there are vintage is also sold on other sites like Etsy and Poshmark and Ruby Lane and things like that. And a lot of times you can get higher prices on Etsy than you can get on eBay. But I think I've mentioned it before when I did sell my 1940s ties recently, 30s, 40s, 
Um, I sold them on eBay and they sold pretty quickly and I was happy with my prices. They were anywhere from $25 up to like $50 and that was fine with me. Um, so I am starting off, I'm just doing a search here. I did a search for 1920s or 20s necktie and uh, I think we, like we talked about last time, you can play around a little bit with whether you include the word neck. Um, if you make 20s, 1920s or 20s, it does change the results a little bit. So we're going to, I have it ended recently, but let's see about doing highest to lowest. Okay, so here's a nice high priced one. Towncraft cravats, as you can see, they do 20s, 30s. They put that together. That one sold for 128 Looks like it had butterflies on it or something. Here's another one. Nice picture, nice graphic on it, Cheney Cravats. So I'm going to point out some names that are kind of well known for this era of vintage. Towncraft is one. Cheney Cravats is another. This one looks like it says it's hand painted. Is that something you can look for? Pilgrim Nobility is another one. Nice prices on these. Look at that one. It's all pleated. Um, along the bottom, Pilgrim, 108. So this is 20s. This is what I tend to think of definitely for 20s is the shape of this and the construction of it. And that's what collectors are looking for. If you can, if you can show really clear pictures of how ties are constructed as well. I don't even know the ins and outs of all of it. I just know how an older tie looks. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. Um, just you'll handle them and you'll be able to tell the difference from a modern tie. And this has a little bit of a flare as well, a flare here and a flare here. And I would think that's like a late 20s necktie. Let's see. This is including some other things. So this one, 20s, 30s, cutter cravat, that's another name. Here's another one with that kind of interesting shape. Now here's a square end necktie, but it's from the 20s. And then another, well, oh, that might be a cravat. Just a different shape, I guess. So here you can see more of that like flare and the way that it's folded. Here's a nice bold looking one, 20s and 30s, $55.67. So this distressed one sold even for $60, it was a Saks Fifth Avenue vintage tie. So what I'm saying is the collectors will find you even if you don't get it exactly right. Okay, let's hop over to the next one. I just went ahead and did another search for 1930s tie. Mm, I still have them all on ended recently. Okay, this top priced one, $225 is a pinup girl. So that's definitely, um, if you're coming across any ties that have any kind of risque theme like that, pinup girls. There's also ties, I think we'll see it later, maybe in the 50s. Um, they're like peekaboo ties, they're called, and the, the girl is hidden on the inside of the tie. And sometimes she's not got a stitch of clothing on, <laughs> um, but it's hidden on the back of the tie, like in within this part, like you would fold it open and you could see the full picture. This one's right on the front and it's in its original box, it looks like, so $225. Here's another one. This person puts it, you know, on a full dressed mannequin. And sometimes people just lot the ties up. Okay, so here's some just more they put 30s, 40s. You can see they use the keywords rockabilly and swing. And sometimes you can, depends on the seller, but a lot of times the seller will put the size of the tie right in the title. So you can see the length and the width and everything. Okay, then let's pop over to 40s. Oh, I must have had this one. I was looking, so I started off with the highest. 1940s necktie vintage tie, wolf gal, al cap, super rare. $500 for that with free shipping. So 
a vintage tie with any kind of picture on it, take another look. This one also got bid up to 280. It's kind of abstract. It kind of, they talk about, I don't know if olive is supposed to be the color or if that's kind of like a martini glass or I don't know, just kind of this crazy abstract design on it. There's another nude pinup girl. Here's that same one. Um, another hand painted novelty tie. And there's another, I don't want to get this canceled. Okay, spiders, that's a really popular theme for neckties. <laughs> and let's see, atomic, that could be another good keyword to use, especially for the 50s ties. A Hawaiian Aloha, 19 or $140. 40s, 50s atomic bomb tie. So we're getting the theme here. So here's another one. They did 30s, 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, right? They kind of went the whole gamut. And I kind of like this idea. They put a shirt there, but instead of tying it, they kind of draped it over the front of the shirt. So that would save some time as well. Again, people lot them up sometimes. And... Yep, just nice, just pretty, pretty ties, right? Here's another kind of spider web theme on that one. That looks like the same one as the other one, so that maybe that's a known tie to collectors that would sell. This one has a very winter type theme. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of the, um, I think this one's so cool looking, the, the bright, bold, ties are what's going to catch people's attention. I'll just do a quick scan down there. That Look, see a Palm Beach tie, 77. Let's see what condition there. I think their condition is still better than mine. Okay, so that's like 30s, 40s. I wanted to talk about, in that list, I don't know if you caught it, I didn't say anything about it, but uh, in that list of, in the higher price ties for the 40s, the name Salvador Dali came up. So Salvador Dali ties can be, can be good money. Okay. And let's see. Now, I, what I wanted to show you first. Okay. I'm, I'm just showing you. There's Salvador Dali. Got bid up to $271. This one, $199. This one. I don't know if they took the buy it now or if they just got the one bid. 169, we've got like this staircase going up. So you get the idea. Now if we go to, these are all solds. If we take it off of solds to active, there are not hardly any listed. There are some um, Ralph Marlin ties who does novelty ties and then who did novelty ties mostly in the 90s he did like a Salvador Dali theme but the ones we're talking about actually came from like the 1940s and those are the ones so if you can see what's active is mostly this 1990s tie and not so they're kind of hard to come by and if you do list it it's going to sell because there's none others listed right now now that is the one that I actually found I will try to find the picture I think on worth point, I meant to have that queued up here, but as I edit, I'll put the picture I found. So that's the tie that I sold that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. I sold, I, I went thrifting one day and I found it at Value Village back in Seattle. It was back in 2015. I think it was, yeah, 2015. It sold for $192.50. I'm thinking I ran an auction and um, I... I knew to be looking for it because I hang out in a vintage tie collecting group on Facebook. I've poked around in that in that Facebook group for a while. And I've learned I've learned lots. I've learned what the people collecting the types of ties that they show off to each other and that the they'll get new acquisitions and they'll show, hey, look at this tie I just got. And so I've also been able to be in there and ask questions about some of the vintage ties that I find. And I they've helped me figure out the age of ties, the you know, how to figure out how old it is. 
Um, and I just kind of picked up some things by hanging out in that group. So I'll put up a picture. It's just called, I think, I Love Vintage Ties, but it's pre-1960. You want to stay before 1960 in there. And, um, you know, it can just be educational. So because of that group, I knew about Dolly, Salvador Dolly neckties, and I couldn't believe it when I actually found one at Value Village. And like I said, it sold for $192.50. So that was just fun. That was my best necktie sale ever. Have not found another one, but I'm always looking. Okay, so I'm popping over to 1950s ties. We start out our high-priced one, our big lots of ties. We're back to some of the ones we've seen already. Um, here's another. It's like a weaver's hand-loomed wool roadrunner tie sold for a pretty good amount, it looks like. Again, some lots. So some of these we've seen already because they people said 40s and 50s, right? There's another Salvador Dali. Mine was called... Um, Symphonic Fountain, I believe. And if I was able to find the Worth Point listing, then I I don't think that's too long ago. Um, then hopefully you got to see already wh which one it was. Or I'll try to find a picture somehow. Okay, so 50s. Here's one of those peekaboo ones that I was talking about. It's inside the tie. And another kind of fun thing on vintage ties is as I was researching, it was another type of tie that I had seen in that collecting group and I've kind of seen over the years. I've never found one myself, but I found it's, it's called, I guess you would just call it like a mirror tie or a mirror script. And I was trying to find any on eBay and I couldn't find any. I just found this one. And people might call it something different, but they might not even realize looking at this pattern that it's actually it's actually writing so if you just cover up one side of this and just read the like hold it sideways here let me do it this way and you cover up the bottom you can see right there maybe it's a last name b-l-a-k-e-y blakey right so somebody p-l blakey or l i don't know i can't read that one but it's a mirror image, so it's kind of like if you, you know, had held up a mirror, that this bottom part is what you would see. But it's kind of disguised as this scrolly pattern, right? So a lot of times, it's kind of rude statements that are, <laughs> there's either um, uh, not clean language, or it's like an insult, or I don't know, just something kind of risque that they're saying. But a lot of times it's just a name. It's just somebody's name got put in this fancy scroll and it's hand painted. So I just wanted to show that to you in case you come across one. And then there was one on Etsy as well. So you could see another example. Let's see. That one's like a lot more clear. So they're hand painted. So maybe they're done kind of personally or something like that. But that one's pretty clear. It says Edwin Brown. So that's kind of fun. But I don't know, if you just look up maybe mirror tie or mirror script, like in Worth Point or somewhere like that, maybe you'll see some more examples. But I just thought that was interesting that I would throw out there for you to take a look at. Next up is Palm Beach ties. Like we talked about, like I showed you this one that I have that is not in the greatest condition. But like I said, I sold one for $60.00. Yeah, and I will put that listing up here and if I haven't already. And of course, if you start to search Palm Beach tie, you're going to get Lily Pulitzer. Um, her fabric was called Palm Beach Fabric. So I'm just mentioning this because that could be something you could look out for too. So <laughs> you're covered by finding a Palm Beach tie no matter who makes it. <laughs> But here's some more of the ones that I was talking about. Palm Beach, Bo Brummel, 61. Let's see. There's a lot of Lily Pulitzer. Let me see if I can add the word Bo. Ooh, there's a matchbook with Bo Brummel ties. That's kind of cool. Come on. 
Okay, there are not that many. I'm in all categories. Weird, not too many in sold. I wonder why that is. I feel like search on eBay has been just messed up lately. I don't know. So there's a few that are listed right now. Palm Beach. I wonder. Yeah, there's not a lot. There's a lot of ads listed. But the kind of classic one, like the, the plaid that I showed you and the kind that I sold, the one I sold sold really fast for $60. So I don't see one like this. I'm in... I'm in neck, I'm in everything. I don't know. I feel like if you don't get exactly the right words lately on, I don't know, it's the same kind. So maybe this particular style that's available right now with these little diamonds and things like that might not be the style people are looking for, that it's definitely the plaid and the, the wide stripes that people want because there's not that many listed. That's interesting. Well, there's one down here. Oh, that's a Lily Pulitzer. Never mind. It has that same look. All right. eBay, I don't know. I think you're failing me lately, but maybe there's people, maybe they're more rare than I thought. And oh, look, here we go. I did prepare something. <laughs> Here's the one I sold. And as you can see, the it's another just kind of wide stripe one. And it was in good shape. So that one sold for $60. Okay, here we go with a vintage square end ties. Remember we just talked about that. Some of those that I showed you that I need to get listed. But here's some prices on some square end neckties. Here's some older ones, 30s, 40s, 40s, 50s, square knit ones made out of wool. Okay, some pretty good prices on this. This is a square end. It's just a Wembley. I think it's silk. It's not a wool wool knit one, but that got a pretty good price. So sometimes there is a couple of patterns. It's not just solid. And then Yves Saint Laurent made a few of these. As you can see the, the monogram at the end. So that's worth keeping an eye out for as well. Those sold for $36. Polo Ralph Lauren wasn't going to be left out, and they did one as well. Then there's my Pendleton one that I talked about earlier that sold for $35. Okay, so just a little bit of proof or information backing up what we were talking about. Now, again, I, I can only do kind of like a quick, quick information on this type of, you know, this type of video you'd have to do, I can't spend a whole lot of time because the video is already going to be pretty long, but I can't spend a whole lot of time comparing how many are listed and how many are sold, the sell-through rate. We talked about that last time. And so that's something that you need to do too as you're researching. Now, if you're going to find your ties at the bins or someplace like that where it's not a huge investment to just kind of buy a vintage tie, come home, look it up, see if it's worth it. I think we said before, vintage ties can also just be bread and butter type items. You can get it for pennies and sell it for $15. You could be totally fine with that. Um, but if, you know, th these videos are just trying to give you an idea of some that might be more worth your time, some of those home runs, but then also some that might be able to sell in like that $25, $30 range. And they're easy, you know, they're easy to list, they're easy to ship that kind of thing. They don't take up a whole lot of storage. And speaking of storage, the last video I did have some people ask me how I store my ties. And full disclosure, um, I don't do anything fancy. Okay, I mean, you guys know me by now. <laughs> I'm pretty laid back on things. And I basically just have a bin right now. Now the bin is not in the greatest shape because I was digging through ties as I was putting this video together. So I just need to kind of fix it up, but it's just a small bin. And we've done different things over the years as far as storage. Um, we don't necessarily put it like in the plastic that we're going to ship it in. Um, I try to just kind of fold it 
as few times as possible and just kind of fold them and lay them in the bin like that. So I have right now, because I don't have a lot of ties listed, the ones I did list have, have sold already. And I don't, I mean, it's a fairly good size inventory, but I can fit everything sold and unsold together. If I get more ties listed, I'll probably just come up with another bin of that same size and put my listed ones in that and just make it easier to find them as they sell. But I'm hoping a lot of the ties I have are actually going to be fairly quick sellers. And so I won't have to worry about that so much. Now, if you're like a necktie collector, yeah, maybe you don't want to keep them in plastic. Plastic bins might not even be great for inventory storage if you're going to have it in inventory for a really long time. Um, in the past, we've used like the, a dresser drawer and just kind of rolled the tie up and, and put it in a dresser drawer in order to just keep it, um, keep it somewhere safe before it sells. So like I said, nothing fancy. Um, you know, I try not to get them too crazy mixed up so it, it's not like they need a whole lot of pressing or something like that before it ships out. Okay, let's see what other tabs we've come up with here. I talked about the fact that wool, generally wool plaid ties are going to do okay. Um, here's a few examples, 15 to $25, Liberty of London, Tartan Plaid, quite a few Pendletons. Now they can kind of be all over the place in price. So that's just, you know, it's up to you where you want to, Pop the price. Burberry, of course, obviously, is going to be good. Brooks Brothers, nice wool plaid. That one's really nice looking. And see, to me, that's nice. That's $85. I don't know that I would have gone that high. So that's that's kind of good information for myself to keep that in mind. A, a plaid polo Ralph Lauren, wool tie. But generally, wool and plaid seem to do pretty well. It's kind of a classic thing that people keep an eye out for. And then I noticed too, a lot of these red and green plaid tartan ties will sell this time of year for the holidays as well. Okay, so along similar lines, this was, I showed you those, those wool ties that could even be a little bit older with the fringe on the bottom. Um, this was one of the brands I had sold before. It was L Denver Lost Wigwam Weavers. As you can see, these sold for about $20 a piece, and we had sold some uh, uh, in that same range as well. And here is, okay, this is that same, this is the same brand, uh, brand as this one. Yes, the hand crest. This is just something I found on Etsy that sold for $24. And now we're just going to talk about novelty ties. I talked about them a little bit in the beginning of the, the video um, as the fact that competition for those types of ties are going to be a little stiff because so many were made. But I thought I would just give you a couple names to look for. The first one is Nicole Miller. Um, she tends to have... These are just... If you see them, I would just look them up. Nicole Miller... This one, Schwinn Bicycle, sold for $50. Dr. Pepper Logos, $26.95. Okay, so she just has all sorts of different kinds of themes, dogs, Dalmatians, just kind of fun neckties, cigar labels. But I would just double check if you see a kind of a fun, fun graphic um, novelty type necktie. Just look it up. You just never know. Okay. Another brand was Ralph Marlin that we talked about. So Ralph Marlin's top one was this BJ Palmer chiropractor tie, $72. Detroit Lions, $69. WWF, Spider-Man. Okay. So Ralph Marlin, like I picked up this one and it turns out it's not that great, but it's Ralph Marlin Sport, and it's got Mets, um, Mets logo, I guess you want to call it that. Um, it turns out it's not that great. But then I also pick up this fish one, 
Ralph Marlin. And these I have sold before. Let's take a look at some of those. 1986 Ralph Marlin. There's a musky. Then this one is, uh, doesn't say what type of fish, but it does say, <coughs> sorry, it does say on the tie the type of fish. So mine is a king salmon necktie. And I sold two of these actually recently in the last year, I would say. Uh, maybe last year. I don't know. But I sold, I put them on Ruby Lane and they actually sold pretty quickly. So it's interesting is as you can see, the prices are not crazy high. Um, $20 or so. But the sell through rate, I did happen to take a look at that because right now there's 71 in solds, but there's only like 50 something listed. So these, these Ralph Marlin fish neckties actually have a um, very high sell through rate over a hundred percent. So that is something to keep in mind. So <laughs> besides like, how fun is that? How can you not like, how can you not pick that up at the thrift store? I don't know. Leave me a comment below. Have you, what's your necktie sales like? Have you sold vintage neckties? Uh, favorite brands, best sellers, things like that. Do you like to sell the novelty ones? The, those to me, I think sit a little bit longer unless you find exactly the right one. Here's one more category of ties that back when we did a lot more necktie selling, kind of in our earlier eBay days, we would always look out for Metropolitan Museum of Art neckties. So here's a really cool unicorn tapestry one sold for 60. Museum Artifacts is another brand. So I just kind of keep my eye out for Museum of Modern Art. That can be a really good one. I remember in the past we sold quite a few of the Frank Lloyd Wright um, ties that have like a Frank Lloyd Wright design or, you know, but anyway, ties, believe it or not, I guess, sell pretty well from museum gift stores. And they can either kind of go with a certain exhibit that they've got going on, or they're just specific artists that they, that they feature. So you have the Brooklyn Museum, uh, the Victoria Albert Museum. So just something else to keep in mind. They're usually like fairly interesting looking neckties that come from museums. So that's something I've also kind of kept on my radar. Here is, okay. I said what I was gonna talk about a rep tie, R-E-P-P. -P. And so I did some research about what that specifically is. Okay, so you can see the stripe on here. So in my mind, that's what I think of. I think of a striped tie like this that kind of has to do with a boy's like school like a private school or an Ivy League college or things like that. So I looked it up. It's called the Andover Shop and Origins and Influence. So it says, okay, that it started among servicemen in the British military. Each regiment had colors. Um, let's see, Reg a regimental flag or colors. The colors were woven in a ribbed silk with stripes running diagonally across, pointing from the wearer's left shoulder to their right hip. So, like this one. Nope. Left shoulder to right. Nope. So this one is not. Interesting, even though it's made in England. Oh, no, it's not. It's made in Hartford. <laughs> I must have been looking at a different one that said England. Okay, so this is American, which we'll get to that in a second. So it says, left shoulder to their right hip, or as the saying goes, from heart to sword. So the concept of the regimental stripe was expanded over time. As gentlemen's clubs, private schools developed their own necktie designs, the style became known as the rep stripe after the repeating ribs of fabric in the silk weave. Okay, keep that in mind. So it's not just the fact that it's stripes. It has to do with the texture and the weave of the fabric to be a rep tie. Okay, and so then American clothiers took their cues from the British after World War I and adopted the design as well in order to avoid directly copying the British school's 
regiment's ties, American reptiles were traditionally oriented the opposite direction. So like the one I just showed you with the stripes pointing from the right shoulder to the left hip. So that makes sense because this was made in Hartford, but it is an older necktie and it would be considered a reptile because it has the, it would be too hard to see on your screen, but it's got the ribbed weave in the silk. So that's very interesting to me. So we always kind of kept an eye out for rep ties back when we were selling more of them. And Brooks Brothers makes them and Ralph Lauren makes them, J. Crew, all these different um, companies. So if we did rep tie, R-E-P-P-T-I-E, and a Brioni, there's a Brioni one. Okay, so we've got some Neiman Marcus made in England. Maybe that's where I got England in my head. Over $100 for those Brooks Brothers. These are dead stock, still sold for over $100. Okay, awesome. Canali, we talked about that in our last video. Brooks Brothers. So, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for vintage rep ties as well as newer company, you know. So, so stripe ties, you know, that might be something that you just kind of like, they look boring, right? They look kind of boring hanging there at the thrift, but you never know. So let me see if they're, this one might have a better picture. Rep silk, you can kind of see the lines in that one if you look at the pink parts, okay? It's kind of that ribbed texture in the silk, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, we're gonna stop there. We could talk about bow ties, we could talk about ascots, we could talk about, but you know what? I think we can do another video possibly on other men's accessories that sell well on eBay. Again, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave me a comment um, down below. Like I said, about anything that you saw there, if you still have a question, if it made sense. <laughs> Hopefully it like helped you and um, gave you some information and more things to look for when you're out at the thrift. And I will see you later on this week.